Hey everybody, it's Shisha here from salesforceway.com. Before diving into this video, let me show you something. It's my t-shirt. Master of lining web component with a big lining logo. <laughs> this t-shirt is very cool, isn't it? OK, with that said, the topic of this video is invocable method. It's Apex invocable method. I learned it from my podcast guest, Arnold Kruvi, a Salesforce MVP. He introduced me what is this invoke method, why Salesforce developers should have mastered it, and what are the limitations of using invoke methods, what are the caveats you should pay attention to. So those are the topic and the contents in the uh, podcast episodes. So I put the link down below in the video description. If you want to listen to that 20 minutes conversation I had with Amno Kruvi, definitely head over to uh, my podcast episode page. So with that said, the video of this content is about hands-on. Okay, we learned it's important to learn invocable method, but we want to see how to really use it, how to create it, how to then use the declarative tools to really call into this uh, Apex invocable method. That's the kind of this video. Let's quickly dive in now. Now I have my Salesforce free dev edition opened in my browser. It has two pages opened. The first page is the process builder page. We're going to come back here to later check the process builder I created. And another one is the uh, dev console. The dev console has the uh, invoke method defined. This is the first thing we have to take a look at. So what we need to do is that we create a normal Apex class file. I give it the name invoke one, which is a very, very bad naming. But in addition to that, we create a public static method inside this class. It can be either public static or global static. Um, these are the two uh, requirements to define it as an invocable method. And then you give it the annotation invocable method, and then it accepts uh, label and description. So label and description, I think uh, it's very important to give a descriptive naming. So, you know, this tells the admins or consultant what this invocable method actually is going to do. And inside the invocable method, you just define whatever you need to do. So in this example, it accepts a list of contact ID. So when this invoke method is called, it expects a list of contact ID coming in. And by giving the list of contact ID, it does some data manipulations. So the details of this method is not important for this video. So it, it just does something and then update a field inside this case. So and then return something. So the as we mentioned, the, uh, this is about the invocable method. And the label, as you can see, is called count open cases. This is important because in Process Builder, you're able to see the label of this uh, uh, invocable method. Now let's jump over back to the Process Builder. I've created the one called count open case. Let's open it up. Count open cases, yes. I'm a bad process builder creator, but here I learned something. For example, we can say that uh, this process builder is linked with case, and it's uh, only triggered when uh, whether a record is created or record is updated, which maps to actually the two trigger condition, which one is after insert and after uh, update. It maps to these two trigger conditions. And then it, you can give some conditions to define when actually this uh, process builder is gonna executing. So here I just said uh, you can define either one of them. Uh, so I'm, <laughs> this video is not about uh, process builder, but you can define them, uh, the conditions to execute the process builder, right? And then the immediate action, I defined the run apex, which is I give it the name and then which is linking to the Apex class, which is the count open cases. If you remember, that's the exact label of that invocable method. And then after that, I say that, okay, uh, there's contact ID and then uh, the contact, contact ID is needed uh, for this invocable method. And the value of that actually comes from the case 
dot contact ID. So the case has a contact linking to it, and what is that contact ID value? Then that value is given feed, let's say feed into this invoke method with that uh, contact ID, if you still remember. So I will also quickly show you how to, uh, in the process builder, to link into it. If I click the add action, I select Apex, which means it's a, a invoke method test, and the drop down list will give you all the th Apex class that can be used. As you can see, I can still click the count, open cases, and then just do whatever you need to do. So, this is how to, in the process builder, to invoke or to link to the invoke method. As easy as this. But the power of using invoke method here is that uh, the admin and the consultant who do not write code, they can define the execution condition for the process builder here. So, for example, we link it to the case and we define the criteria to run this process builder. These things can be defined by the admins who don't write code. And then the complex logic in the process builder can be written in advance by um, developers. We define the inside the invoke method, and by linking these two, this is kind of a separation of concerns again, that you give the task to different uh, entities. So admin does the best of their job, and the developer does the best of their job, and then they talk to each other, and then they define how, in what scenarios the, the, the pro, what kind of process builder or flow can invoke what kind of uh, invoke method. By doing this, one of the benefits is that the invoke method can be used in multiple scenarios in the future. So admins can define different scenarios. They can use process builder or flow to actually uh, to call into the invoke method already existing in the environment which is very good. So it saves a lot of hassle that the developers need to go through the whole release process to update certain Apex uh, code. So this is the kind of low-code scenario in Salesforce platform. A caveat, we mentioned that we need to uh, talk about the caveat. These are unofficial caveats because it was not written in any official documentation from Salesforce. It's uh, told by Anu Kruvi, my podcast guest, that um, if you have more than 200 records in one execution and the call into the uh, invocable method, if you remember the invocable method has a list of ID. So if the list contains more than 200 records, then it drastically slow down the performance. So this is something you need to test by yourself. And also you need to maybe uh, tell the admin and consultant that uh, if they do have more than 200 in one execution, then that's not an uh, ideal scenario for this case. And also in addition to that is that, um, the, as you can see, the the process builder declarative way is that uh, it only um, has the two conditions. One is when the record is created, another is when the record is uh, added. So it's like after insert and after update. So it does not have all the eight trigger conditions that a trigger condition has, which has like a before insert, before update, uh, before uh, delete, before uh, undelete, if I remember. So there are those scenarios that uh, the invoke method and the process builder cannot really handle. So this is all the things I want to talk about the invoke method. Definitely pay attention to these things I just mentioned and also have a look at the official documentation about the invoke method. And then maybe in the future there are things updated, maybe it supports better. Uh, there are more than 200 uh, records, who knows, you need to test that. And this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, click the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enjoy the whole learning Salesforce journey. Bye-bye.